Nine o'clock, little playmates, nine o'clock. By popular demand, we halt our evening's festivities to bring you that demon of the airways, that boogeyman who will get you and you and you if you don't watch out. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who has made transom peaking a specialized art, Jerry Tracy, by courtesy of the Daily Planet. Nine o'clock and all's well and is tracing the news with Tracy, bringing you the news of the day, the news and the gossip. H.H. H. Hardigan, scion of wealth, who believes in the slogan, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, has again lived up to his name of hard-hearted Hardigan by leaving Babs William with an engagement ring and fond memories. He is now the constant escort of Bubbles Martin, the prettiest of pretties of Fred Hammer's popular club Saratoga. Love them and leave them seems to be H.H.'s motto. Who knows where a red-headed girl, height 5 feet 4 inches, weight 116 pounds, with the loveliest blue eyes in town, and answer to the name of Sally Arlen is at this present moment? If so, tell Phil Hunt at once. Phil can be found hanging on the Astor bar to drown his sorrow over the fact that Sally is giving her attentions to another. And now, folks, hold on to your seats tight. We're going around the curve, and it's an exclusive party. Now we come to Edgar Drake, president of Drake Utilities, the millionaire who gained a hollowed spot in our column when he gave a bellboy a dime for carrying a trunk up to the 16th floor of the Waldorf apartment house where he lives. Drake sails on the Princess Anne at midnight tonight. He is Europe-bound for a conference that will result in the merger of Drake Utilities and Moiré and Sons. Lucky news for the stockholders, just another shrewd move by that titanic man of finance. But Edgar Drake, the man that controls the destiny of millions, cannot control his own wife. Uh, good evening, Mr. Drake. Are my bags packed? Uh, yes, sir. They've all been sent to the ship. All right, get out of here and leave me alone. I've worked with it. So within a few weeks' time, we should be enjoying the news of the Drake divorce case. As soon as Edgar Drake is safely out on the ocean, his wife, Pauline Drake, said to be the most beautiful woman in Westchester, will go to the divorce court to free herself from Drake to marry a man who is the legal brains for Drake Utilities, David Corning. A very interesting situation indeed. Your reporter Jerry Tracy will keep his ear to the ground, his eyes on the horizon, and keep you informed regarding this triangle. Don't forget tracing the news with Tracy. And now, good night and pleasant dreams. If your conscience is clear. Ray, I feel kind of groggy. I'm going to get a bath of air. Hello, Tony. Give me my hat and coat, will you? Going, Tony. Oh, hello, Mr. Hammer. I, I was just going out for a breath of air. Oh, you look like you need a doctor. What's the matter? My stomach, I guess. I'm a little upset. Oh, you're letting that radio news bother you. Divorces happen in the best of families. I hate that man, Drake, and I don't like to see my mother's name smeared all over the front page of a tabloid. Oh, uh, take it easy, boy. Take it easy. If no one here knows your Drake's stepson, and they won't unless you tip them off yourself. Now, go on out and take a walk. It'll make you feel better. Just get back in time for the next number. All right. Thanks, Fred. Give me Westchester 7, 0162. Hello. Oh, Tony. Yes, she's here. She'll be so glad you called. Just a minute, I'll call her. Phone for you, Mrs. Drake. Who is it, Anne? Who gets it? Not Tony. Darling, I didn't expect to hear from you tonight. I thought you'd be working. Did you hear the Tracy broadcast on the radio tonight? No, dear. I didn't. Did I miss something? Well, he said you were getting a divorce, that you were going to marry David Corning. Tony, dear, you're all excited. Don't worry. Mr. Tracy isn't telling anything that everyone doesn't know already. Well, but don't you realize your name will be on the front page of every paper in the country? Drake won't allow you to divorce him without creating a scandal. Well, dear, there's nothing we can do about it. Don't worry, darling. It'll turn out all right. Look, I I've got to see you. It's important. Please come. Very well, dear. Shall we say the townhouse, then? All right, then. I I'll meet you at the townhouse. All right. Goodbye, dear. And I, I'll go to town at once. I just thought I'd better call and tell you that Mrs. Drake went over to see Tony. All right, Anne, I'll go right over. It'll be all right. Thanks so much for calling.
Hello, Mother. Tony, dear, why did you do this? I had to see you. Well, we can't talk here. Let's go inside. Hello. Yes, this is the Drake resident. Edgar Drake speaking. Yes, I heard Jerry Tracy's broadcast. What of it? What's that you say? My wife is with Mr. Corning at my townhouse. Who is it? Wait a minute. Hello. Hello. Jerry Tracy. This is Jerry Tracy. Who? Edgar Drake, huh? Well, this is Buffalo Bill, wise guy. Edgar Drake's on his way to England. This is Drake speaking, Tracy. Listen to me. I heard your broadcast with reference to my divorce suit. You want news, don't you? Here's some that'll interest you. My wife, Pauline Drake, is with David Corning at my townhouse. So what? I'm going up there now. If you'd like to be in on this little incident, meet me there. You don't have to tell me twice. What's the matter, Jerry? Don't get excited. Look, here's your chance for a real story. Do you know who that was on the phone? No. Edgar Drake. No. Yeah, now look, I want you to get out of the dock and get on the Princess Anne. I don't care how you get on there. Tell them you're the ambassador of Sweden, but get on that boat. Yeah, but Jerry, I don't look like a Swede. Now, there's a chance that that call was a phony and Drake was just trying to give me the slip, but I can't risk that. I'm going down to his townhouse now. All right, take it easy, Jerry. I'll take care of everything while you're gone. Right, Barney, stick around. I don't know how long I'll be inside. I'll look for you when I come out. Okay, Jerry, I'll go on down and get a cup of coffee. Right.
City desk. Morgan, this is Jerry Tracy. Here's a story for you, and we got it exclusive. Edgar Drake murdered. No, I don't know the details. All I know is he was stabbed to death by persons unknown between 10.30 and 11 o'clock at his townhouse. Yeah. Now I'll call Inspector Fitzgerald right away. I'll call you back within the hour. Right, goodbye. Who is it? Wait a minute. Don't move. your hands over your head and stay where you are. What a dope of tricketty, but isn't Jerry Tracy. What in the world are you doing here? Inspector, you're the first person tonight I'm really glad to see. Well, what's going on here? Somebody's been using my head for a punching bag. And you must have interrupted the murder and his work. Yeah, where's the body? Hey, wait a minute, Inspector. How did you know there was a body here? I got a call at Westside Pay Station telling me to come up here and I'd find the back door open and the body of Edgar Drake in the living room dead as Kelsey's ghost. And I, I got a call myself. That's why I was here. And Edgar Drake was here, too, lying there just a short time ago. Now, listen, Jerry, take it easy. You sit down. You're all in. Sergeant, you go and give this place the once over and don't miss anything. Now, tell me, Jerry, who's playing the joke on this and why? Well, I came over here and answered the call. I found Edgar Drake dead. Murdered. I took a look around the house and I went upstairs. I came down again. I phoned my story into the newspaper. I was just about to call you. That's the last thing I remember until I woke up and you came into the room. That's the strangest tale I've heard. You think I'm lying? Don't you believe me? Certainly I do. Who said I didn't? But where's the body of Drake? Are you sure you weren't slugged at some other place and then you walked here in a dream? I know what I saw. You think I dreamed that? What's that? It's an ear stopper. You put it in your ear and it shuts out all the noise. I suppose the murderer didn't want to hear himself do what he was doing. Is that the idea? All right, wise guy. I suppose I didn't see Pauline Drake here. Who? Pauline Drake, Edgar Drake's wife. Well, maybe you can tell me where she is. She's probably at home by now after all this fooling around. Say, maybe you're right. Let me get at that phone. This is Inspector Fitzgerald of the police department. Get me Mrs. Pauline Drake out in Westchester. We'll find out what she knows about this. What'd you find out, Sergeant? No, nothing in the house. It shouldn't be, Inspector. Everything's ship -shape. Hello? Mrs. Drake, this is Inspector Fitzgerald of the police department. I'm sorry to call you this unusual hour, but it's very important. When did you see your husband last? Why, well, he was here for dinner. He sailed for Europe tonight. I think he left about nine o'clock, said he had some work to do. Is anything wrong? He's dead. Oh, no, you must be mistaken, Inspector. My Mr. David Corning, our attorney, was with Mr. Drake all evening. He was with him until he boarded the, um, Princess Anne. Have you been home all evening? Have you? Well, I'm sorry to start you like this. Good night, Mrs. Drake. Good night. There's more to this than I first thought. When you tell a woman her husband's been murdered, she doesn't say as cool as a cucumber, you must be mistaken. I think we'll pay a call on David Corning. I hope he'll be in. I think we're getting someplace, Fitz. Let's go. His light's on. Come in. Well, good evening, Inspector Fitzgerald. What are you doing here at this late hour? We have a couple of questions to ask you. This is Jerry Tracy, the Daily Planet. Well, I didn't know it was the custom of a newspaper to send an inspector of the police department with a reporter to get an interview. Skip the compliments, Corning. This is a little bit different than the average interview. Mm. Well. <coughs> Where were you at 11 o'clock tonight? I don't like your tone of voice, Tracy. What's the meaning of this? Mr. Corning, it may interest you to know that Edgar Drake has been murdered. My dear inspector, I can easily understand how an ambitious newspaper reporter, eager for sensationalism, could be misled. 
I wouldn't expect it of a man who has spent years in police work. What do you mean by that? Obviously, you've been made the butt of the same practical joker who told me the story an hour ago. How do you know it isn't true? How do you know that Edgar Drake wasn't murdered? And I still want to know where you were at 11 o'clock tonight. Other than being an inquisitive newspaper man, what right have you to ask me? Have you any legal right to question me? Have you a warrant for me? No, I haven't. Then I refuse to be intimidated into answering any more questions. However, Inspector, if you can silence this over-enthusiastic young man and tell me the meaning of all this, I'll be glad to give you the best information I can. First question. What do you know about the murder? Call it the rumor of the murder of Edgar Drake. I received a mysterious phone call telling me that Mr. Drake had been murdered in his townhouse. I knew it was untrue. I had been with Mr. Drake until the Princess Anne sailed. What did you do after the boat sailed? Came here to my office. Is it your habit to come to your office after midnight? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, I prefer working at night when there's less noise. Oh. Noise bothers you, does it, Corning? You ever seen that before? Now, Jerry, either keep out of this or I'll throw you out the room. Mr. Corner, it seems that someone has a very good reason for wanting it to be generally known that Edgar Drake has been murdered. Can you tell me what that reason might be or who might have it? Well, I can tell you the person, naturally. However, the reason might be the manipulation of Drake utilities. You can easily see how the sudden death of Edgar Drake at this time would mean a serious loss to the company and would cause a serious drop in Drake's stock. His death wouldn't be any loss to you personally, would it, Corning? Inspector Fitzgerald, I refuse to tolerate any more insinuations that Mr. Tracy's making. If Edgar Drake has been murdered, produce the body. If I'm to be held as a material witness or as a suspect, I demand that I be so held and questioned legally. When I received this mysterious phone call, I saw to it personally that the papers were correctly informed. As much as you may regret it, Mr. Tracy, there will be no story on the death of Edgar Drake. Let me warn you, Inspector. I have been retained as attorney for Mrs. Drake, personally. And until you have sufficient evidence to warrant an indictment by a grand jury, I don't wish her to be disturbed. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me. Sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Corning. Okay, Corning, have it your own way. But if you think this story is going to stay out of my paper, you're crazy. I saw Drake dead. That's the story I gave my paper, and that's the story they're going to run. Now, in as much as noise bothers you, we'll go out very quietly. I don't know, Fitz. I, I don't seem to like that guy. He doesn't sound on the level to me. You didn't make a pinch? No. You can't pinch a guy, especially when he's a smart lawyer, unless you have a direct charge or some evidence against him. Did you hear that crack he made about not liking noise? A guy like that could wear air stoppers, couldn't he? Cornyn's a guilty man, Jerry. If he didn't commit the actual murder, he's mixed up to his neck in it. But we can't put the news around that neck yet. What's your idea? How do you figure? I was trying to figure out murder mysteries when you were read up from your kindergarten teacher. And there's one thing I learned, and that is, think what you want, but never tell anybody until you get the proof. I'm going to count any, meeny, miny, mo over about four people I know, and one of them is going to be it. <laughs> You're going to be it, not me. What do you mean by that, Frank? Whoever did this murder was among those present when they handed out the gray mantle. I could make a pinch now. I could pinch Corning, Mrs. Drake, and maybe one or two others. But they'd be out on the pavement by the morning with the evidence I've got. I'm handcuffed. You get what I mean? Everything I do has got to be legal. I get it. I'll do the going around and the interviewing trying to get a lead. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, I'll tear that Drake house apart looking for the corpus delecti. I'm convinced in my own mind that Drake has been murdered, but there's one or two questions we've got to answer. One is, who did it? The other is, where is he? If we answer the second one, the first one will be a lot easier. Right, but not tonight. You go home and get some sleep. <laughs> I can take care of myself, Fitz. I haven't been to bed before 5 o'clock in the morning for the last 10 years. I'm going down to the paper now with my story. I'll call you tomorrow afternoon. You will not. You're mixed up in a dangerous business. You call me by 10 in the morning. If you don't, I'll come looking for you. And keep in touch with me. All, All right. right. Hi, Snyder. Boy, oh boy, I got a follow-up on this Drake yarn that'll make your eyebrows curl. I'm sorry, Jerry, but we're not running any story on Drake. Say that again, will you, R.A.? I'm not sure I heard you. I checked with the coroner's office, and they have no report on the murder. That's what I come up to tell you. The body is missing. Well, that's interesting. Now, look, R.A., I just went up to see Corning. You know, David Corning, the attorney? Well, there's the man that either killed Drake or I don't know what I'm talking about. It's the biggest story of the year. It's a story we can't print. What do you mean you can't print it? Murder is news. We have no evidence that Edgar Drake was murdered or is even missing. If we were to publish that news and it proved false, we're leaving ourselves open to a million dollar payoff. I'm sorry, Jerry, but we'll have to pass that story up. I saw his body. He was stabbed at his townhouse about 10 o'clock tonight. I got there just a few minutes afterwards. Well, where's the body now? I don't know. 
I will get you ten that David Corning knows something about this, and I'm going to find out what he knows. Well, what you do, Jerry, and what this paper does are two different things. If you're sure that Edgar Drake was murdered, all you have to do is produce the evidence. Find the body, and I'll publish the story. But until then, I'm afraid I'll have to lay off. You're going to be the sorriest man in the world if you don't print this story. It's big news, exclusive. Sorry, it may be. But as editor of this paper, I can't publish that story without any evidence when I've been warned by a man who's an attorney that he's going to sue us. Well, if that's your final word on it, R.A., I guess it'll have to be okay. But you're making a big mistake. I'm going to stick with this story until I clear it up. favorite night spot of the elite, the Saratoga. Mm. And don't forget to add, presided over by the host of hosts, Fred Hammer. <laughs> you seem to be doing all right. A pretty good mob out there tonight. Oh, I turn a nice profit down then. Say, how do you like the new band? You mean the same old band with a new leader and a different name? Pretty good. Good and loud. The crowd seems to like it. I told them to tone it down, you know. The noise bothers me a bit. So you got a new trumpet player. Where's Tony? Now listen, Terry, you and I know that Tony is Pauline Drake's son, but nobody else does. You're not going to use that as an item for your column, are you? He's a good kid. Give him a break. Who, me? Sure, I'll give him a break. What happened to him? Your broadcaster and I worried him. He's afraid the divorce scandal will blacken his mother's name. I told him to go out and take a walk. He did. When he came back, it didn't do him any good. I told him to go on home. Where'd he go, and what time did he get back? He left just after your broadcast and came back about uh, 10 or 10.30. Don't drag him into the case, Jerry. A kid like that who could have every luxury as a rich man's son and refuses to take a dime and would rather work for his living deserves a fair break in this world. You've got nothing to worry about, Fred. I won't throw him to the wolves. That's the boy. That's the boy. Order anything you want. It's on the house. Thanks, Fred. Seven Twelve Kentucky Street. time you showed up, a fine guy you are keeping you waiting half the night. But listen, while you've been gone, I've been pretty busy. I dug up a human interest story that'll jump our circulation 5,000 even. Listen to this. Now, think of being a broke trotter at the age of five. I guess that's all you can do is think about it. But little Annie Smith didn't think about it. Oh, no, little Annie Smith did it. She stayed last night aboard the Princess Anne, and she was... Li are you listening to me? And hey, what happened to Drake? I don't know. He never showed up. Hey, wait a minute, Jerry. Wait a minute, what happened to you? Somebody invited me to a party and I went to the wrong one. <laughs> Somebody with plenty of pee that you all right. I wish I'd been there. Who was it? There's no time for riddles. I got a lot of work to do. Come on, help me get fixed up. You bet your life. Come on, Jerry. All right, all right. Hello? Yeah, yeah, 
this is Jerry Tracy's place. Yeah, he's still in the kit. In the hay, he's in bed. Yeah. For me? Oh, I'm the butler, sir. Yeah, yeah. Who? Police department. Oh, Inspector Fitzgerald. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll take it, Brent. The fellow's Inspector. Hello, Fitz. Yeah, Jerry. So you went home too early last night. The fun wasn't half over. I'll tell you about it when I see you. Yeah, I'll be down. Now, here's an angle, Fitz. It may lead to something and it may not. Find out what brokerage houses are selling great utilities in large blocks. Yeah, that's right. Well, I figure whoever it is may know something about this. Well, it's only a shot in the dark, but you can't miss any bets. I'll be down later. About a half an hour. Bye. Brain, you're a genius. Last night I was half dead, now I feel like a new man. Well, you can get anybody in shape if you got a lot of time. But it's tough to do it in between rounds of a fight. Say, I'd like to have a date down a dark alley with that mug that slugged you, that's all. You haven't told me yet who it was. I'll tell you on the way downtown. Come on. Come on. All right. You wait here, Brains. I'll be right out. All right. I want to get a shine anyway. Hi, Fitz. Well, Jerry, what was the fun last night? Well, I started for home and made the mistake of picking the wrong cab. It was already occupied, only I didn't know it. Well, what happened? A couple of mugs roused me about and dumped me out in the street. They did? I'll say they did. I don't know what they wanted unless they're trying to scare me off the case. Good news or bad? That depends upon the way you look at it. There's proof that Corning is mixed up in this affair after what he said last night. Thompson, starting tomorrow morning, I want a daily detailed report on David Corning. What he has done, where he has gone, who he has talked to. Half the wires in his arms if necessary. Yes, sir. Swear out a John Doe search warrant and comb the entire neighborhood of the Drake townhouse. I want every house searched from top to bottom. I want every cab driver that hacks out that district interview. Tell Captain Wallace to send one of his best men out to Westchester and keep an eye on the Drake home. Make an appointment for me for the first thing in the morning, the DA. Yes, sir. Hey, Pitt. I wonder how much Pauline Drake knows about this. Think I can get her to talk. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, say, Jerry. Yeah? I found out the names of the firms that are selling Drake utility short, but they refuse to divulge the names of their customers, and there's no way at the present time that we can force them to. What are the names of the firms? There are only two firms that show any marked activity. One is Barrows and Company, the other is Hodkins and Company. The large lots are coming from them. Hodkins and Company, eh? There's a break. I got an in with that firm. I did a favor one time for Everett Hodkins, and I think he'd be glad to repay it by telling me the name of the man they're acting for. Well, if you can do that, you'd be doing more than the police department can without arresting someone and putting them under oath. Well, they can't rule you off for trying, can they, Fitz? I'll get in touch with you later in the day. I'll send brains down to Hodgins and Company while I pay a personal call on Pauline Drake. See you later. Good luck. Hey, Jerry. I got an errand for you to do. Yeah. And I want you to keep your wits about you. I want you to go to the Hodgins and Company and see Everett Hodgins. Tell him that I want to know who the person is that's buying Drake Utility short. Remind him that I did him a favor once. I don't miss on this range. You know me, Jerry. I'll come back with everything you want to know. You go down there right away, and I'll meet you at the Saratoga Club at the usual time tonight. Right. Saratoga Club. Yeah, Saratoga Club. Yeah. Tonight. Tonight. Yeah. You'll be there. I'll be there, yeah. Because I don't want to... All right. Hello, Mr. Hopkins. Hello, Brains. How's Jerry? Fine. Stay on the QT, Mr. Hopkins. Jerry wants to know who's selling Drake Utility short. You're asking me to violate the confidence of our customers. Well, this is very important, Mr. Hopkins. Uh, Jerry said to be sure and find out. He said you owed him a favor. Well, I'll do for Jerry what I wouldn't do for anyone else, including the police department. Well, that's fine. This is very, very important, you know. Go this to Jerry and tell him to forget where it came from. Thank also you. tell him that's all I know. Thank you. And uh, we won't forget you did us a favor, Mr. Hopkins. Oh, glad to do it. Tell Jerry to drop in and see me sometime. I will. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Glad to see you. Well, how do you do? My name is Tracy, Jerry Tracy, of the Daily Planet. Would it be possible for me to see Mrs. Drake for a few minutes? I hardly think so. Mrs. Drake is indisposed. It's very important that I see her. Important to her or to you? Well, that's a very fair question, Miss... Uh... Anne Leslie, Mrs. Drake's secretary. All right, Miss Leslie, I'll put my cards on the table. I want to see her. She doesn't want to see me. Well, what is your reason for wanting to see Mrs. Drake? I want to ask her what happened last night. I don't understand what you mean, Mr. Tracy. What happened last night? Well, we'll put the question this way. I want to ask her where she was last night. Well, I can tell you that. She was at home. That's not true. You know and I know that she left this house last night about 9.30. Why do you make such a statement? I'm a newspaper man, Miss Leslie. It's my job to know things like that. Who is it, Anne? Is it 
this is... Oh, Mr. Drake, I'm Jerry Tracy, the Daily Planet. Would it be possible for me to see you for a few minutes? Yes, will you come in, Mr. Tracy? Thank you. Won't you sit down, Mr. Tracy? Well, thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Mrs. Drake, I assure you that what I'm going to ask you is not for publication. Yes? Was I mistaken when I thought I saw you at your townhouse last night? You were mistaken, Mr. Tracy. Did you see either Mr. Corning or Mr. Drake after they left here following dinner last night? No. Has your son Tony quarreled with Mr. Drake lately? It makes you think my son has ever quarreled with Mr. Drake. Well, I simply put two and two together. If Tony and Mr. Drake haven't quarreled, then why has Tony been working at the Club Saratoga these last two weeks? I know a lot about your son, Mrs. Drake. And believe me, I want to help him. And you'll help me a lot if you'll only answer these questions. I know that Tony hated Mr. Drake so much that he was willing to work for his own living rather than take one penny of Mr. Drake's money. That's quite right. Tony did refuse to take money from either Mr. Drake or me. Can you censure him for that? Why must you drag his name into it? Mrs. Drake, I have no intention of dragging his name into it. I admire your son very much. After all, I've known this story for the past two weeks and haven't used it. I don't intend to use it. I only want to help your son, believe me. Oh. Why have you come here, then? Because you and I both know that Edgar Drake was murdered last night. And I'm going to find out who did it. Why conceal the facts from me? No reason to conceal anything. Then where did you see Tony last night and what happened when you saw him? I didn't see Tony last night. Yes, but you did leave this house at 9.30 last night. You did go into town. Now, if you didn't see Tony, who did you see? Mr. Tracy, you're a newspaper man. You seem to know everything. From your broadcast last night, you appear to have a very good knowledge of my personal affairs. So you see, there's really no need for you to ask me all these questions. You should be perfectly able to figure the whole thing out for yourself. Good night, Mr. Tracy. Why will she deliberately lie to me? Whatever she says, she has a good reason for saying. Look, Mr. Tracy, I can ask you what Mrs. Drake can. Would you please help her in this instead of fighting her? That's what I want to do. But she's shielding somebody. Why, I don't know. If she'd only trust me a little, we could make a lot more progress. How do you know these accusations you're making are true? Because Pauline Drake wasn't at home between 9.30 and 10.30 last night. I saw her myself at her townhouse. What's more, there are other newspaper men know this story. What's to prevent them from printing it? If you'll only give me the facts, I'd give you my oath. I won't do anything to hurt her. Well, perhaps I shouldn't be telling you this, but I do believe you. Mrs. Drake left the house shortly after 9 o'clock. She went and answered her phone call from Tony. Where'd the call come from? I don't know. What did she say when she came back? She said the police would probably want to know where she was last night and that I shouldn't say anything. Look, will you do me a favor? If Mrs. Drake gets any more phone calls, will you let me know who they're from? All right. Fine. I'll call you later tonight. How will I know it's you who's calling? Well, when you answer, I'll call you Joyce instead of Anne. About what time will you phone? Oh, I don't know. But when I do call, I want you to obey every instruction that I give you. Good evening. Honey buns. Huh? Why, you big stick of sugar cane, where have you been? Honey bun, what do you think I am, a beehive or something? Well, I've been around, you know, I'm a pretty busy guy. I'm doing a lot of big things. Say, huh? wait a minute. What? what about last night? What about? You said you'd be up here about 9 or 9.30 and didn't show up at all. Well, I told you. I, I went home at 5.30 all by myself. No. Just think if somebody would have grabbed me or something. Oh, nobody's going to grab you, baby. Well, they wouldn't, oh. huh? <laughs> I didn't Say, mean that. you must think you're the only one. Nah, you know what I meant. I mean, if they if they knew you were my girl, they'd get scared, that's all. Oh, yeah. Nah, I didn't mean anything by that. <laughs> Say, is Jerry in there? Yeah, he's in the booth. He is. Well, I gotta go and see him. I'll be right out. Now, you, uh, you know, don't get too busy. Now, wait a minute. Here, see if you can get me a good hat, will you? I need that. Well, I got my man. Stop talking like a flatfoot, Rains, and sit down. Yeah. What'd you find out? That Hopkins is a nice guy and buys us down sometimes. Never mind that, did you get the information on Yeah, but say, he said to get kicked off the stuff to change as they found out. Never mind that, come on, come on. Oh, you mean the, I found out the guy's name, it starts with a, nay, uh, ac, uh, 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 acrobat, no, well, I got it here someplace. Probably just as well. Wait a minute, you know, I never lose anything. If you'd stop thinking about that hat check, girl brains, and keep your mind on your business, you'd be better off. That's it, Terry. I'll be right back. <laughs> now, in my country, we know how to treat women. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, pardon me. Give me my, my hand. Here. Come in. Hey, you are standing I'll on my feet. Here. Move out of this it's way. Not after you? hours, you can't get in now. Move out, I think. What do you want to fight with, guns or pistols? I'll be back. Well, that's where he hides his new telephone numbers. What I tell you, boy? There it is. I told you I never lose anything. Mm -hmm. 
Raines is a long shot, but it may work. You get down to Inspector Fitzgerald's office at once and tell him to find out through the building commission what architect drew the plans for the Drake townhouse. You'll see that you get the blueprints all right. Now, I'm going to the Drake townhouse now. You get them as quick as you can and bring them to me there. I'll be there in no time, Jerry. All right, come on. Give me my hat. Are you coming back to take me home? Yeah, sure. I'll be back. I'll take you. Okay. Hammer in yet? Yes, you just came in. Yep. Down on the higher ups. So you have some interesting reading here. I didn't know you played around with the stock market. Oh, sure. I take a little flyer now and then, don't you? Say, you get around. Don't you ever get any tips? Doesn't anybody put you wise to good things? Now and then. I never have any need for it. Next one I get, I'll pass on to you. Ha <laughs> ha, that's the bell. I see Tony's pretty sick. Must be serious. Oh, he's all right. Just worried. I talked to him today. Where's he live? You leave the kid alone. What do you keep gum chewing him for? I have good reasons, Fred. This is serious business. You like Tony, don't you? Yeah, sure. Why? Then you can do him and me a favor. You know where he lives. I want you to take me there. it will save us both a lot of trouble. Don't get your idea, Jerry. Tony's in the jam, and he knows that I know that he is. That's why he's been ducking. I don't want to get tough with that kid. That's why I want you along. Hey, but what can I do? Talk to him. Calm him down. Then we can have a nice, friendly little talk. Well, it's going to be friendly. Come on, let's go. Who is it? Oh, come on in, Fred. Wait a minute. I don't mean that cheap tabloid hound. Then let him in, Tony. He may be able to help you. I don't see how that low sensation seeker could help anybody. If you're sensible, you'll unwrap that fist of yours and let him in. All right. I'm an easy guy to talk to, Tony. You'll find the cops are a lot tougher. What do you mean, cops? Officers of the law, the boys in blue. You know, they arrest people for a little thing like murder. What are you talking about? Where were you between 10 and 10.30 last night? What business is it of yours? Simply this. Your stepfather, Edgar Drake, was murdered last night. You left the club Saratoga about 9.30. Now, you'll save yourself a lot of grief if you tell us where you went. Did you tell him I went out last night? Oh, sure I did, Tony. What's wrong with you going out? All you have to do is tell him where you went, that's all. All right. I went to the Waldorf Apartments to see Drake after I heard your broadcast. What for? I went to tell him that if he did anything to harm my mother, I'd kill him. Then you admit you had a grudge against Drake. Oh, why shouldn't I have? He's the dirtiest... Did you ever use the name Agataris? No, why? Skip it. Go on, tell us what happened. Well, after I got into the apartments, I found that Drake had left. I went back to the cafe, didn't I, Hammer? Sure. Well, yes, yes, you did. But you went out again, right away. Followed Drake and killed him. I didn't even see him, I tell you. Now, there's no sense in lying, Tony. I've checked with the clerk. You went to the Waldorf apartments, but you didn't go inside. You saw Drake coming out. You followed him to the townhouse. You went in through a back door and you killed him. What proof have you got? You ever seen that before? Don't you know who that belongs to? No, oh, who? Why don't you ask Hammer? Tony means that he knows that I use the stuffer sometimes to keep out the noise of that orchestra. You do? Well, sure I do. There's nothing wrong with that. Most of the boys in the orchestra use them. You use them yourself, don't you, Tony? What? Yes, I... All right. I did it. I killed him. What else do you want to know? Where'd you hide him? He's right in here. There, behind the shower curtain. Give me my hat. 
think I know where he is. He's either with his mother or with Corny. Better let the cops handle this, Jerry. We haven't got time for that now. Come on. Well, I've had enough for one night. I'm going back to the club. Want to live? No, thanks. I want to get to a phone. And Fred, don't say anything to hear from me. Get me Westchester 70162 in a hurry. Hello. Hello, Ann. Yeah, this is Tony. Get Mother, will you please? Yeah, yeah, hurry. I know who killed Edgar Drake. Hello. Who was it, Ann? Oh, uh, just someone who had the wrong number. Hello, Joyce. This is Jerry Tracy. Have you received a phone call from Tony? Someone just called a moment ago. It sounded like that... Uh, it sounded like that person. He only said a few words and then hung up. Or else we were disconnected. What did he say? Where was he phoning from? Mrs. Drake just left the room, so I can talk freely now. He said, I know who killed Drake. I heard a shot and then the connection was broken. I don't know where the call came from. Now listen, Anne, I want you to do exactly as I say. Yes, yes, I will, I promise. You get Mrs. Drake and bring her to her townhouse at once. Yes. Well, make some excuse. Tell her, tell her she's going to meet Corning or Tony, whichever one you think best. You let her go inside and then you meet me in front of the house. I'll meet you there in half an hour now. Can you make it that time? I'll be there. Now what did you do, Mr. Tracy? Send Clarence on another errand? Mr. Hammer coming yet? Oh, I know. He went out with you. He hasn't come back yet. He'll be back in a few minutes, but I can't wait for him. Let me have a piece of paper, Alan, please. I want to leave a note for him. Be sure he gets this. This is important. All right. You think you can remember that? Well, I've never forgotten anything. Fine. You do this for me, and I'll put your name in the paper. Maybe your picture. Oh, gee. So you made it. Does Mrs. Drake suspect it was my idea you bring her here? No, because Corning called her and asked her to meet him here. Where is she? She's upstairs. Are you sure everything's going to be all right? Positive of that. Say, hey, look. Regardless of what may happen, what are you doing Tuesday night? Why? Do you want me to stay home and wait for a phone call? Right, the very first guess. And the call won't be something serious either. Why, Mr. Tracy? Now look, here's what I want you to do. You wait in the hallway right inside this front door. No matter what happens, what you may hear, even if shots are fired, don't move or make a sound. But this uh, is all. You do exactly as I say. We'll use the same name as we used before. When I call Joyce, you phone Inspector Fitzgerald. You tell him to get here and get here quick. we will be waiting for the call. Come on. Just a minute, Corny. What's the meaning of this, Tracy? What are you doing here? I came here to find Edgar Drake's murderer, and I think I found him. Just what do you mean by that? You killed Edgar Drake and hid the body. 
Then when you thought Tony Payton was going to expose you, you came back here and murdered him. I had nothing to do with either of those murders. No, you don't kill people, Corning. But you have the unusual habit of being around when murders are committed. I... Tracy, I think it's about time I put all my cards on the table. I was here the night Drake was murdered. Mrs. Drake was here, too. But neither one of us killed him. And why did you deny you were here? Drake Utilities was about to close a deal with Moray and Sons. If the news of Drake's death had leaked out, the deal would have fallen through. The stock would have taken a serious slump in the market. Many innocent people would have been hurt. I felt if I could keep the news of his death a secret long enough to close the deal, I could prevent a loss to the investors. Then it was you who knocked me out when I discovered Drake's body. Yes, I couldn't trust you, a newspaper man, to keep this secret. And you also had me beaten up in the cab. Yes, I wanted to frighten you into dropping the case. What are you doing here? I came here tonight to place Drake's body where I found it, and then to call the police. Where is the body? Right here in this room. Here? Yes. He had a secret vault built in which to keep his private papers. Here, I'll show you. over a million dollars worth of negotiable bonds on hand here all the time. And there's Drake's body. That's all I wanted to know. You put the last piece in my jigsaw puzzle. Now's the time to call Inspector Fitzgerald. Hello, Fitz. Jerry Tracy. The case is solved. I'm at the Drake Down House and I know who killed Edgar Drake. Yeah. I got my first clue from the broker. Hey, look, Fitz. What's the name of that nightclub right near the Drake townhouse? That's right. Club Saratoga. I'll spell it backwards, Fitz. Right. Agatara. All you have to do now is pick up Fred Hammer. I'll save you the double of picking me up. I advise you two to stand perfectly still. A man can swing for murder only once. My time is already up. Step on it. Fell for that note, eh? I thought that would get a rise out of you, Hammer. You asked me for a tip on the market, and the one I gave you was a good one. The merger was completed, the stock was going up. You couldn't afford that. So you hurried here, hoping against hope to find the body and expose it to the world so that the stock would go down in spite of the merger. You're plenty smart, Tracy. Wouldn't have been a bad idea to have cut you in on this deal from the start. My only mistake was losing the ear stopper. I'm sorry I had to kill Drake. It was my only out. Luck played with you from the start, Corning. If I could have found Drake's body, and you hadn't hidden it, I'd now be on my way to the Orient with a million dollars. Now, nothing's going to happen here, providing you do as I tell you. Now, Corning, you and Tracy, bring Drake out into this room and place him here in front of that desk, just as you found him. Well, you wouldn't want this gun to go off, would you? you gentlemen to go into the vault. Don't move. Corning, take Mrs. Drake in there with you. Come, dear, we better do as he says. You've done a lot of favors for me in the past. I'm sorry I can't be as considerate of you. some time. Why, it's Mr. Drake. Start the cell and search this house from top to bottom. Call Chief Daly and have him detail 100 meters around this block. Allow no one to leave without my permission. Yes, sir. How many shares of stock are you short in the market, Hammer? Plenty. More than I can make good. Here you are. This drawer is full of Drake utility stock. Why not go out and cover your losses and show a profit at the same time? Always wise, cracking, aren't you, Tracy? 
How long do you think we've got in here? I don't know. I don't know what you're worried about. You haven't got long in or out. Start searching each house. There's somewhere in this area. But they must be here in this house. Don't worry, Miss Leslie. They can't escape. If they're in this block, we'll find them. The air's getting stifling in here, Jerry. I don't know how much longer we can hold out. There's only one hope. It's a slim one. Hi, Inspector. I didn't expect to find you here. Where's Jerry? That's what I want to know. Well, he told me to meet him here, and when he tells me to do something, I've got to do it. And believe me, I'm not going to leave this house until I find Jerry. Uh, I, uh, hey, what is the fellow? What is, is he, is he, I, I'll see you after. i got to go. Well, what is the fellow doing? Yeah, if Jerry sent you here, he must have had some reason for doing so. Yeah, he did, but the fellow's laying... I, uh, somebody must have... I've got to see you Just after. Just a minute. Okay. Did Jerry tell you to bring these papers here? Yeah, this is the plan for the house. Hey, there. what a stupid lug I've been. This is the answer to where Jerry is. Yeah, these are the art to take blueprints of this house. Yeah. Jerry always suspected there was a secret passage someplace. What is it? But what, would you ask me what the fellow... Now, there's the hall, see? Now, here's the living room. Say, what's that? That's a secret vault. That must be where they are. Yeah. Well, let's look for them. What are you doing around Hey, here? this is it. Well, here. Maybe he's behind one of these maidens' prayers or something. Come on. Sir. Get some men, some pickaxes and crowbars. Hurry. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Hammer. Why don't you shoot us? Not yet. I may have a use for all of you. If you do, don't miss. And save one for yourself. Get all on. right, boys. Now get on this job. Try it open. Use those crowbars. Brains made it. Now, you three people are my life insurance. I'm going out of here and you're going with me. Now, get in front of me. Mrs. Drake, you stay in front. Tony, you stay on that side of me, and Jerry, you stay on this side. Come on, get it up there. Clear a path from that door, Fitzgerald. Stand back, men. Mrs. Drake, and there's no hurry. And so, ladies and gentlemen, much to everybody's surprise, Edgar Drake was murdered in his townhouse instead of going to England. And there is no need to put the murderer behind bars. Fred Hammer had stuck to his job of being genial host at the Club Saratoga instead of trying to be a Wall Street manipulator, his bullet-riddled body wouldn't be lying in a morgue tonight. And the moral to that story is, a stitch in time gathers no moss, or something. You've been tracing the news with Tracy. We'll be back tomorrow night at the same time. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and happy dreams.